That's a lot of dango. A lot of dango, a lot of balls. <laughs> now let me eat some balls. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mini Shiitake. I am Flo from Vancouver, Canada. And I'm Jay and you're watching Mini Shiitake. So I wanted to take the time to uh, thank all the people who have hit the subscribe button, who are supporting us and following us. It doesn't look like a big number to some, but it means a lot to us. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. And if you're not subscribed yet, well, just go ahead and uh, you know hit that subscribe button and then uh, ring that little bell, like the thing you do on YouTube. All right. Jay, what are we talking about today? So today we are going to talk about Japanese sweets. Japanese sweets? Ooh, I like me some sweets. I'm not really a sweet tooth, but I do like, uh, you know, I do like sweets once in a while. When I moved here to Japan, I started loving sweets again. It's probably because of the distinct appearance, the presentation, and the quality of the sweets in Japan. I don't know a lot about Japanese sweets. I know about a couple that we're going to be talking about. But what I like about Japanese sweets is really the way they look. They look different than what you would see in other places, right? I agree with you. And now that we're talking about that, first of all, I'd like to have a, some little taste test with one of the most popular and common sweets that we have here in Japan. Ooh, I want to try it too. So we have this Meiji brand macadamia sweets and the flavor is matcha. Ooh, I like matcha. And this is one of the most popular flavor in Japan, even in the Philippines. Well, again, I would probably be a little biased, but I will try not to be. So let's try. Open over there and whoop. Oh, we have another. It's so green. <laughs> okay, let's open it a little bit more. Oh, ooh, so green. Looks fancy. It really does look fancy. Oh, and I can already smell the matcha from here. I can smell the matcha all the way to Canada. It smells like grass. <laughs> Let's taste it. Okay, to be fair, I don't know why, but I like this. Is it sweet? Okay, that's a good question. So let me finish eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, nom, nom, nom two hours later <laughs> oh my god like seriously um the sweetness is fine it's not bitter when i was eating this i felt like i was drinking uh matcha latte at the same time this makes me want to eat another one but that will be like another five years to go i wonder i wonder how that would go with with actual tea if you had a cup of tea and you eat this at the same time that might be good yeah, yeah, it would be good. Or some cold fruit juice is also good, but I would prefer hot tea, yeah. So I would say this is a 10 over 10. All right, 10 out of 10. Now that we have tasted one of our sweets for today, let's go to some of the things about Japanese sweets that make it really popular and unique. All right, so let's talk about packaging. What I love about Japanese sweets packaging is the quality and the professionalism of the packaging. Some Japanese packaging are too much, but this is just right because number one, it looks very presentable. And number two, it has a tight seal. And then once you open it, it's also sealed for freshness, which I think is good. It looks really fancy when you open it. It's like, whoa. Right? I mean, it, it looks so professional. And if I had that, that would last for like half an hour. Half an hour? I'd be like, om nom 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 nom. Uh, for me, it would last like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're even worse than I am. <laughs> Guys, so I'd like to share you some of the most common Japanese sweets that we have here in Japan. Number one is the mochi. So what is basically mochi? It's fairly common here. You'll find it in most uh, Japanese and Korean restaurants. I kind of know what it is, so tell us more about it. Okay, so when I was in the Philippines, mochi was introduced only in the late 2000s. We basically didn't have any idea what mochi was 
at first I thought mochi was just this, you know, this tiny pastry ball with something inside and that's it. That's what I thought about mochi. But then I realized mochi just has a lot of variation. There's this thing called daifuku mochi and manju mochi and so many kinds of mochi. All of the mochi. Mochi is basically the rice and the water and some sugar and a ton of elbow grease. Sometimes when you see on uh, traditional Japanese movies, there are these guys pounding rice and, you know, doing the ninja effect of all that while making the while making something from 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 that wooden bowl over there. That's the mochi they were making. And that is the outer core. Um, that is what you call mochi. So there are many kinds of daifuku mochi. Most of them really look so attractive and so yummy that you don't even want to eat them. Some of them have these leaves on top of the mochi. Some of them have strawberries inside. So how would you know that they are daifuku mochi? As long as they have some anko filling inside. So anko means red bean paste. I, I don't know what you call it in Canada. What do you call it in Canada? We call it red bean paste. <laughs> okay, in the Philippines, <laughs> in the Philippines, I think we also, no, we call them mongo. All right, so anything, any mochi that has a red bean paste inside is called daifuku. And then we also have the manju. So what is a manju? It's not jumanji, okay? It does sound like jumanji, but... It's called manju. So basically, manju is a kind of mochi, but the outer core is a bun, like a bread bun. Where's, where's the rice part then? Because I thought mochi was the rice base. But it's usually, instead of rice, they substitute it with wheat flour. And because it has a anko red bean paste filling inside, uh, they still consider it as mochi which is kind of weird right I'm yeah like, that makes no I'm sense i'm kind of confused I'm a, I'm a little confused too we probably better ask the experts yeah all right let's uh let's call in our mochi experts oh wait we don't have one. Oh. so guys if you know more about the difference between mochi daifuku and manju please tell us in the comments actually i have a sample of a manju here Ooh. all right all right hey we can see what it looks like for real Exactly. So this manju came from the countryside of Hokuryu. So Hokuryu is where my fiancé lives. And uh, yeah, if you can notice that the packaging is absolutely professional. Looks so nice. It looks like, a, um, it looks like a, a present, like a gift you're ready to give to someone. It does. Okay, let's... Oh my god, it still has a box inside. God, wow. Okay, here we go. <gasps> oh my god. It looks so pretty. That looks really nice. Oh my god. And it's still... What? It's still sealed with plastic? Oh my god. What? It's gonna take years for me to open this. Oh my god, I can smell the red bean paste, but I still can't open it. Oh my god, it smells so good. Okay, so this is what it looks like, guys. It has a, it has a kanji of Hokuryu and the sunflower designs. Oh my god. I have to choose the ugliest one because they look so good. Now let's try... Oh, these are all so cute. I have to choose the ugly one. Okay, I'll choose this one. Mmm. So, it's very soft. It's not too sweet, but it's sweet. It's easy to eat. A little starchy. Mmm. Looks good. Mmm. It looks good. It tastes good. Oh my god, it tastes so good. Mmm. It tastes like sweet potato. There you have it. There you have it, guys. Okay, so next, let's talk about the dango. As we all know, dango is mostly seen on a lot of anime, especially during summer. So dango is just made from powdered grains and cereals. 
usually rice flour or, you know, as we all know, mochiko. All right, we got a lot of kinds of dango. First, we have the hanami dango, which is commonly seen on anime. And then we have the mitarashi dango. We have the goma dango. So what is goma dango? Goma just means sesame seeds. If you kind of look at the picture, they look like black balls. They look like black balls. They look like burnt balls. And then we have the anko dango. So just remember, guys, anko means red bean paste. And uh, in the picture, there's a anko paste that is topped on the plain dango. We also have the bochan dango. I think, correct me guys if I'm wrong, but bochan dango is usually eaten during autumn. That's why the colors are like that. And then we have the yomogi dango. I, I bought this at a supermarket just nearby. And we inside we have the goma dango. And then we have the mitarashi dango. And also we have the anko dango. And we're going to taste them all. That's a lot of dango. A lot of dango, a lot of balls. <laughs> now let me eat some balls. One pack of this at the convenience store is probably around 100 yen. So that's just one US dollar. Which one would you like me to try first? Go with the goma dango first. Let's get it out of the way, you know? Kind of scared. Here goes. Mmm, mm, look yummy. <laughs> I would say that the texture is kind of gross. The texture is like that, but the taste is good. <laughs> like the, the sweetness also is just right. Okay, let's move on to the mitarashi dango. Okay, let's eat them balls. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Mitarashi dango is soy sauce. Sweet soy sauce. I wouldn't say it's salty, but I can I can smell and taste the soy sauce at the same time. And I like that it's combined with the dango. Usually it's combined with the with the goma dango okay lastly let's taste the anko dango here goes mm. okay i would say this is the least that i like surprisingly because it's too rich in a combination of all these they they do taste good all together but if I'm going to choose just one, I would choose this mitarashi dango. Okay, and last but not the least, one of my most favorite and most popular desserts, especially for kids in Japan. We have the Japanese pudding. Ooh, the pudding. And this is Glico brand. So guys, if you know Glico, this is the brand where in Osaka there's a running guy. I don't know, have you seen that one? But yeah, that, that brand is Glico. There's a running man in the street. Okay, uh, I, I in, know. In the buildings. I, I've never seen that. I'm gonna have to, uh, research, to Google that. It looks like a flan. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put it upside down and put it on a plate. Okay, here we go. Yikes, I'm kind of scared. Shoop! Oh, that was fast. Hey! What? Oh, it's going down. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Look at that, guys! Tickle, tickle. Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 almost fell up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna taste it now, guys. Here we go. I would say it looks good. It looks fluffy enough. It's not too sweet. But I would say the vanilla flavoring is too strong. So I'd say this is... For the Glico brand, I'd say this is... 5 over 10. Oh, 5 over 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's alright, but it's not great. 
Yeah. But I'd say the usual Hokkaido brand pudding or the Hokkaido made pudding are really way better than this one. This pudding reminds me of a weird Japanese commercial. Play pudding! Play pudding! And it became viral on YouTube. So if you guys are familiar of that, you know what I'm talking about. For our topic, Japanese sweets. Thank you for listening and watching. Yeah, so today we learned a lot about uh, you know fairly common and popular sweets that they have in Japan. Uh, you're gonna have to send me some of those because I want to try some of those that we don't have here. And uh, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, don't hesitate to leave a like, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, uh, ring the bell. Follow us on social media everywhere. It's going to be on screen there. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, we'll see you guys all on the next one. Bye. Bye. Hey, you want some? Hey, I want some. Oh, here you go. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> I need water. <laughs> I'm gonna get some water. <laughs> right.